Now in this video, let's patch up our sample and hold module and see what's going on here. So first of all, as I mentioned, we have to have some sort of input to the sample and hold to sample. So what we're going to do is going to start out here with this low frequency oscillator, this voltage controlled low frequency oscillator right here. And we're going to grab a sine wave from that and plug that into the input on the sample and hold module. And you see that the sample and hold module itself has something called a clock rate, a trigger, a switch here, we don't know what that does yet, glide, which we'll get to in a second, and an input and an output. And this is designed to work specifically with control voltages. It generally works in the control voltage range, although it can do stuff in the audio range as well. So what we just did was take a sine wave, a low frequency oscillator sine wave, and plug it into our sample and hold module. Now what I'm going to do is take the output of that sample and hold module and drag that over to the frequency modulation input on our oscillator here. So what we just have done is create a control voltage chain here that is going to be adding a control voltage of some sort, we don't really know what that sounds like yet, to the oscillator that we are outputting. So let's just play that and see what happens here. Well, that's kind of interesting. I'm not playing those notes by any means. I can't play that fast. So we're getting a, basically a kind of an arpeggiation effect. And that is the result of the sample and hold sampling that sine wave that's going in there. Let's just listen to that again and see what's going on. Now, as I play the keyboard, we're changing the pitch of the basic oscillator there so I can play in a different ranges. But you can hear that there's a series of steps going up and down that are corresponding to the shape of the sine wave there. And in fact, take a look at this chart here, this diagram that I'm going to show you that will explain what's going on. So you see in this diagram, we have a sine wave shape. And the sine wave, this is our familiar waveform display that we've seen before in previous series at any rate. And what we're seeing here is a chart or graph of the changes in amplitude over time. So in the vertical domain here, we've got amplitude. And in the horizontal domain, we have time. So amplitude over time. And in a normal sine wave, if I take here, let's just, in fact, we'll bypass this. I'm going to remove this connection here. I'm going to disconnect this connection here. I'm going to take my sine wave and plug it straight into the oscillator that we're controlling here, and you'll get exactly what you expect. That oscillator sweeping up and down according to the shape of the sine wave. Let me remove that again and reconnect this to our sample and hold module. And we play that again. We get a series of steps. So what's happening is, again, referring to our diagram here, is that the sample and hold will, at a particular clock rate, which is set by the clock rate up here, and which can also be changed with other things, but essentially it does a clock rate, which means that it is going to take a sample of the sine wave's amplitude, the sine wave's value at a particular time, and it's going to hold at that value until it gets the next clock tick. So let's say let's say our clock rate was one second, for example. So at a particular point in time, wherever that is, wherever the sine wave is being sampled at that particular point, the sample and hold is going to hold at that value. It's going to sample that value and hold it at that value until the next clock tick, which is going to be a second later. So let's, uh, in fact, we can hear something like that if I turn this way down. Let's try to get this at about one second or so. There we go. And let's play that now. So what's happening there is that that sample and hold is sampling the sine wave at the one second interval. And it's kind of picking not exactly a random value because the sine wave, of course, is predictable. But because there's no synchronization between the sine wave and the sample and hold, what we're getting there is kind of an unpredictable sample of the sine wave at that point. And in fact, you hear there's a little bit of predictability there because we're kind of sampling the sine wave on the upsweep and then on the downsweep, but in different places. And so 
In the next video, what we're going to do is take a closer look at that in terms of our graph and see exactly what's happening. And what we're going to be seeing here is what's called a staircase wave. And that's what's being generated by the sample and hold is a staircase wave.